Welcome low ego action heroes. I'm Debbie Levitt from Delta CX. We are a full service CX and UX consultancy. And this is my Axure 10 core skills course. I've been using Axure since February, 2011, and I've been teaching it for many, many years. And in fact, I've been one of Axure's recommended trainers since 2014. This course is designed to take you from super Axure newbie or Axure afraid all the way through to confident intermediate. So if you've landed on this one video, there are many, many others. Please check our Axure lessons playlist for a lot more videos about using Axure. The Delta CX YouTube channel has over 500 videos on it as of when I'm recording this in December 2021, and I hope you'll subscribe and join in some of our live streams. I'm live usually three or four times a week with teaching UX research and design, talking about CX, helping people get into the profession, helping leaders and managers, and of course, don't forget, Tuesday office hours, ask me anything. So subscribe and hang out here. So thanks for being here. Please subscribe and let's jump into that next actual lesson. Let's learn about grids and guides. Now, these are partially just a customization of your UI experience, but they might also be what you use if you are doing a mobile responsive type of design and you need to use some sort of grid system. Now, this can be accessed a bunch of different ways. From your context menu click, you can easily find rulers, grids, and guides. You can also find it up in the uh, Axure menu under rulers, grid, and guides. So whether you like to use that context menu click or the menus, here's all the ways to get there. So let's talk first about the grid. And again, the grid is just for your UI preferences. So snapping to grid is a, is a preference. It's how it's spaced whether you want a line or intersection. So the intersection would look like, now of course we've created a setting, but we didn't show this. So we have to say show grid. So here you go. This is the intersection. You've got dots every 10 pixels because that's what you said. If you prefer that graph paper look, you can say line and pick what color you like. And now you can already see here, it has that graph paper look. And that's up to you. You can also say turn on and off snapping. You can turn on and off show. You can turn off on and off the rulers. So again, all of these are uh, for you to customize the way you prefer to work. Now there are also page guides, print guides, and global guides. Print guides, pretty obvious. It's going to show uh, the boundaries of printing, which I don't really do from Axure, but maybe you will. And of course, you can uh, create all kinds of snapping settings. And if you notice, all the things we're looking at are in the same module here. So if we want to change these things, they're all in one place, all of these settings. So this is snapping to widgets and margins, and this is the color of the lines and numbers that will come up when you are snapping. And let's also talk about guides. So we've got, do you want the guides in the back? Do you want to see it in the ruler? Global guides are, I guess that's fuchsia. Page guide color, I guess I would call that teal maybe. Uh, page dimension guides would be magenta, which we'll see that later uh, when we talk about adaptive views. And print guide, which again, I don't use. So let's talk about page guides. Page guides are very similar to your Adobe Creative Suite days. If you need Need to create a guide at the page level. So right now I am on page one over here. I can just come into the ruler and drag down a guide and place it anywhere I want. And Axure is showing me the Y coordinate of where it would be. And of course I can do the same with the X. Now notice in Axure that our X coordinates start from zero and go up and our Y coordinates start from zero and go up. If you took math in high school or elementary school, you might remember that on a graph, when we go down, the numbers are negative. In Axure, these numbers are positive because zero is the start of a web page or screen. And then we use the positive numbers to represent how much someone has scrolled down or how far down the page it is. So these are positive numbers. So this is how you can make your page level guides. You can move them around and if you want them to disappear, just break 
bring them back into the ruler and they're gone. Now these are called page level guides because they only exist on the page where you dragged them out. If I come over here to this page, they're not here. So this is just for the particular page where we created these. If you want something that's going to last a little bit longer, there are global guides and we can mess with them here from create guides. And the idea here is that you're probably going to use some sort of grid system like a 12 grid system or maybe something from material design or something you've determined. So whatever it is, whether you want to use a default for your grid system or you have your own numbers to put in for your columns with gutter and margin. In, you can drop those in. Now, if you want them to be global guides, which means they'll show up on every page of your prototype, existing ones and new ones, then you can say, okay. And these are those magenta ones. So you can uh, decide if the numbers in here are just too confusing. Again, that was a setting that we can uh, turn on and off. Let's go back to where those settings were. And I think that was always show locations in ruler. So you can see when I unchecked that, that was a little bit uh, less wild on the eyes. Now these are global. So that means every page now has these guides. If I go to this other page one, they're here too. And I can show them or I can hide them. So I can say, uh, let's see, where is it? Show global guides and uncheck that or use the keyboard shortcut. And they'll still be over here. They won't be over here, uh, but I'm saying they're still they'll still exist. You haven't deleted them. You haven't changed them. These are the global guides. You can lock them because it, you might want to lock them because if you change them here on purpose or by accident, they're going to change on every other page. And that could mess with that uh, grid or responsive type of thing you're trying to do. And uh, then that's going to be bad. So you might want to do lock guides after you've made them. There we go. So again, for the most part, these were things relating to uh, your UI and the way that you want to customize this for yourself. Typically when I'm working, I do not use uh, these types of guides. I use page guides once in a while, um, but I don't typically show my grid and I don't typically show global guides. But again, you find your own style and do what's best for you. See you in the next video.